Today in Master of Crafts, artisan jewelry made of copper and silver, which conceals living secrets. Electroplating is a way of conveying the beauty of nature and metal. A wonderful world created by a young Ukrainian designer at the crossroads of chemistry and jewelry art. UATV peeked into a workshop where flowers and leaves are literally turned into beautiful jewelry. Once upon a time, 300 French writers and artists wrote an angry letter to the Paris authorities that went as follows. For 20 years we will be forced to look at the hideous shadow of loath column of iron and screws that stretches over the city like an inkblot. They were referring to the Eiffel Tower. Today few people remember that the agreement between the French capital and engineer Gustave Eiffel contained an item on the mandatory dismantling of the structure in 20 years. And one of the zealous opponents of the tower and master of stories with an unexpected ending, Guy de Maupassant, could hardly imagine that it would outlast him over so many years. And that's not just because Eiffel's creation had quickly become the symbol of Paris, but due to the structure itself as well. The tower has stood for 130 years without major repairs, because Gustav Eiffel used scientific design drafts of anatomy in the project. Half a century after the construction, engineers and biologists found out that the supporting arches, with many small joints, exactly repeated the structure that was characteristic of the head of the human tibia. It was one of the earliest applications of bionics, an applied science that borrows various engineering solutions from nature. Today, its achievements are everywhere. Velcro used in clothes is a copy of burdock hooks, Modern submarines have rounded instead of sharp noses following the example of whales. The interior of the East Gate shopping center in Zimbabwe is cool even in 40-degree heat. Its unusual design is inspired by termite mounds and as a result the building effectively absorbs and releases excess heat while consuming 90% of the energy for air conditioning. Engineers began quite often imitating nature only in the past 150 years, but creative people have been doing that for millennia. However, it was only by the 21st century that creators gained access to an affordable engineering tool that allowed them to bring art to a whole new conceptual level. I create handmade jewelry from silver and copper, sometimes combining electroforming techniques with elements of the classical art of jewelry. Maria Riznik does not just imitate nature. She uses plant shapes as physical basis for her ornaments. That means that each of her crafts literally remains alive. I extended the life of plants. They live on for a long time in metal. They will be basically unchanged, which is beautiful. What made a girl who had no aptitude for exact science to learn the galvanization technique? How difficult is it to copy natural shapes in this way? And what new inventions did the Ukrainian designer come up with? Watch next in our program. Filling another galvanic bath with a solution, Maria Riznik recalls her most despised subject in school – chemistry. She would have never believed back then that not that many years later she would become a jewelry designer with an emphasis on a complex chemical process. Maria's dream inspired her to change her life. I saw a ring in one of my dreams. It was a bronze ring, a bird. For some reason, I knew how to make it. I looked up a store for jewelers, went there the same day and spent all my savings on some primitive tools. A jigsaw, a couple of chisels and files. These are nothing special. Maria recalls that she stayed up until 4 in the morning working on the cherished ring. It was not particularly complicated, but the novice craftswoman realized how exhausting the work of a jeweler was. Prior to that, Maria was only involved in creating hairstyles. I initially studied in a philosophy faculty, but I dropped out naturally. Then I started to become a stylist, a hairdresser and a makeup artist. But my profession became secondary and then disappeared altogether. I only make jewelry now. After a couple of years of various experiments, Maria got acquainted with the electroforming technique and realized that she could use it as her main profession, unlike classical jewelers. In addition, she thought of coding natural objects instead of machine blanks. In the philosophy faculty, Maria obviously studied Aristotle, because she practically speaks in his quotes. 
Думаю, что все мировое наследие I think that the whole world heritage was a consequence of the fact that people were inspired by nature and drew all their knowledge from it. It seems to me that any sphere of art was initially inspired by nature. Nature does all the creating, and I simply draw what comes to my imagination. Especially for UA TV, Maria Riznik shows how jewelry is born in her workshop, which was co-authored by nature itself, how it's made. The ornaments of Maria Riznik and modern electric cars have more in common than one can imagine. Both became possible thanks to one person, Moritz von Jacobi. This German physicist invented the electric motor, which incidentally had no applications in the 19th century. However, another one of Jacobi's discoveries was the method of electric plating, which was immediately put into work. That's the name of the process of metal deposition on a mold, which makes it possible to create perfect copies of the original object. This occurs in the electrolytic solution with the passage of a current. It is known that a coin was the first copied item, but Jacobi realized that counterfeiters could use that, so he destroyed it. By the end of the 19th century, many items were made this way, from standard tea sets to printing rolls in typography. The main advantage of electroplating is a high, up to 10 microns, precision of copying and fineness of metal deposition. Parts of modern electric vehicles are nickel-plated exactly this way. Maria uses copper and silver in her works. I take electrolyte for silvering. I need two silver anodes, and it must be silver of the highest grade, 999. The two anodes are placed in a galvanic bath where an exchange of molecules takes place between them, speaking in a primitive language. Molecules move from one anode to another, settling in the right places. In traditional jewelry production, molds of the desired shapes coated with a layer of graphite go through electroplating, while graphite is necessary for the chemical reaction to occur. Simply put, this is so that the atoms of metal have something to stick to. Instead of making casts, Maria goes to her garden and collects leaves, branches or flowers. I often even apologize to the plants that I harvest and I promise them that they will be used for something greater, for something beautiful, so that in the end they will become a beautiful object. The craftswoman covers this leaf with the necessary layer of graphite, but at this moment it is too early to silver it. The first stage is copper coating. The natural blank goes into the galvanic bath, and then there are hours and hours of waiting. Maria calls the resultant shape a framework, though it is far from perfect. Electroplating is not an entirely controlled process. It's electrochemistry, and it's quite chaotic. Molecules often settle as they please. If I want and need to do it, I can solder something and then put it back into the bath, or I can remove something. I strengthen weak points and solder certain places. Electroplating works best with convex surfaces and, worst of all, with holes. If the leaf pattern transferred well into copper, Maria can begin the process of silvering. It is not very economical to apply precious metal directly to graphite-coated organic materials. Anyway, a part of the living nature remains in the core, conserving without access to air. Everyone who wears Maria's jewelry knows that they're not just silver. This layer is actually enough so that people won't even guess that there is copper underneath. But I tell them, of course, silvering can also be done from scratch, but I have chosen this technique for now, because I find it easier.
Gradually, Maria began adding precious and semi-precious stones for her galvanic compositions. The pinnacle of her craftsmanship looks like this so far. For example, in this bracelet, we can see a combination of a cherry blossom and a blue topaz. Galvanizing flowers is difficult because they are very fragile. And that is because we coat them in graphite at first. It's hard for them to survive the process, so to speak. I often don't get it right on the first attempt. I can ruin, forgive me, flowers, but I can even ruin a dozen flowers before I finally do it right. But how did Maria manage to attach a topaz to such a delicate foundation? It is particularly difficult in combination with stones because those are solid materials and combining them with brittle materials is difficult. But how I do that is my secret. The craftswoman has already made dozens of such mysterious ornaments. Maria only admits that stones don't always fit the galvanic bath with plants. Therefore, she has developed at least two methods of soft galvanization, which work with different stones. This bracelet made of a real branch has rock crystals attached to it. You see that I had to bend the branch in shape, make it the base. That was also actually fairly difficult, because the more stones that are involved, the more difficult the work gets. Naturally, it was hard to put them together initially. Maria rarely uses sketches, and most of her works are improvisations, based on natural motives. The craftswoman is inspired by the creations of various artists and architects. Antonia Gaudi is one of her favorites. It is known that observations of nature formed the basis of his unique modernist style. Maria is still impressed by her trip to Barcelona. Essentially, Gaudi drew his inspiration exclusively from nature. He did not like making blueprints. As far as I remember, he even failed an exam, because he did all the calculations from inspiration. For example, by looking at a tree growing and seeing how the weight was distributed there. He built the famous cathedral Sagrada Familia, for example. What Maria strictly prohibits is the works of other jewelry designers. She believes that it's the most important to not lose one's unique voice in today's polyphony. Her friends often send her links to various interesting works that use similar techniques, but she stands her ground. I ask them to not do that, because it's very important for me to preserve my style and come up with it naturally. Hence the wonder world, because it's a wonderful inner world that expresses itself. This approach to creativity led Maria to the invention of a new subset of jewelry. This is an actual fern coated with copper and silver and attached to a bracelet, but you can't put it on your wrist. Nobody understands what this is and how to wear it, but this is an ornament for this part of the hand. And it's very convenient. People usually ask if it's convenient. And it really is. I don't know how to call this object. Is it a bracelet? Is it a ring? Think for yourself. Now Maria plans to master electroplating with gold. In addition, she is interested in professional stone cutting. Currently, the craftswoman buys them from Ukrainian suppliers or brings them from her travels. She has recently visited the place where the world history of architectural bionics began and borrowed something special. It's not just stones that I bring from other countries. I visited Paris in the summer, and I found beautiful little acorns right under the Eiffel Tower. They will definitely become ornaments soon. They're waiting for their time to come. Thus, the talented Maria Riznik did not become a philosopher or stylist, but joined the young generation of Ukrainian creators who are creating a new material culture based on long-standing national and world traditions. Recently, certain development has started in Ukraine. It makes me glad that people are trying to make things by hand. Those are often very interesting objects. I'm personally fond of many people who work with ceramics, for example. Those are often very interesting works and very artistic objects. They are not just some standard dishes, but genuine objects of art.